Welcome all you guitar nerds out there. This is a little video about how I build a Valcon National M clone. If you're interested, just stick around. These amps were made from the mid 30s until the late 60s when Valco finally went out of business. The Valco factory in Chicago was one of the biggest manufacturers of musical instruments. Big enough to have their own zip code, Chicago 51. So these guys already made a mass production of amps when Leo Fender still was shitting in his pants. Um, some guitar nerds know these amps at least by name because the first two Led Zeppelin albums were recorded with a small Velcro amp. They manufactured for a lot of other brands. They supplied amps for Airline, Supro, Oahu, English, Tower, Gretsch, Orpheum or Bronson. And here you can see some of the original amps from this era, just to give you an idea how they looked like. These tweed covered amps were the basic design that my replica is based on. Alright, time to get started. Follow me to the wood shop. Well, no, this is not a rabbit cage. These small amps had a quite simple design, square, but the front is, that's my opinion, beautiful as you can see here. It's already routed and sanded, so time to glue everything together. Building a solid pine wood cabinet is very important, I think, because rather than chipboard or laminated wood, a uh, solid cabinet is resonating, like yeah, um, acoustic guitar does. These are the parts for the chassis, and here we have the layout for the front panel, and you can already see the locations for sockets and transformers. They are marked on top of the chassis. Let's check if the chassis fits the cabinet. Well, yes, it does. Time to put her dress on. Well, to get the look close to the old Valkos, I bought a cloth that is used on chairs and couches. The so-called tweed that you can find on Fender Tweed amps really don't look right for me. After gluing the cloth, to the cabinet, I covered it with a few layers of shellac that hardens the surface and gives the cabinet a nice vintage look. Here is the fake serial number. Every Velcro amp got these badges, either brass or aluminum. The letter in front of the numbers tells you the decade the amp was made. V means 1947 till 1951, X is 1952 till 1958, and a T means 1960 until 1963. The national emblem was a real challenge for me when I cut that thing on a little jigsaw. Something that shouldn't miss is the little envelope for the spare fuse. Without it, I'm sure the amp wouldn't sound right. I made it out of wrapping paper. As you can see here, the finished product and placed into the amp's cabinet. The speaker is in place. As you can see here, it's a Janssen C10R is good for around 20 watts. I designed the front panel on my computer, uh, put it on a, a USB stick and went to a print shop. I got that printed out on a self-sticking foil that is usually made to cover cars. 
So you can imagine it's very resistant and robust. Just to make sure that everything fits, I installed all the hardware like the transformers, the sockets, switches and stuff. Just to make sure. Well, the chassis gets the finish, uh, and I was using car foil again, and I think it's looking pretty nice, and it's much easier than to use lacquer or something like this. All right, time to grab the solder iron. Here I flip the chassis over, and you can see uh, some of these tube sockets, the terminal strips and other parts of the hardware. A pretty simple design. Let's take a look at some improvements that gives this amp quite a bit more versatility. Here are the backup diodes connected to the socket of the rectified tube. This is the switchable bypass capacitor on the cathode of the power tube. All the black wires that you can see are uh, for the audio signal and they are shielded to suppress noise. And here we have a grid stop resistor at the power tube's grid. And finally we take a look at the input section. Let's discuss these improvements by looking at the schematic. The first thing is the backup diodes. These diodes protect the transformer in case of a short in the rectifier tube and they extend the life of the rectifier tube. I increased the values of the coupling capacitors and that brings the sound of the amp closer to vintage specifications. A warmer tone and enhanced bass frequencies. The switchable bypass capacitor at the cathode of the power tube makes the amp significant louder and gives it more gain. Switch it off and you're back to stock. Here we have another improvement, a grid stop resistor at the power tube. It filters unwanted frequencies, prevents oscillation and blocking distortion. Here's another improvement a master volume. Your neighbors will appreciate that, I'm sure, because these 5 watt jokers can get very loud and you will benefit by having a nice breakup at lower volumes. Okay, last but not least, the input section. You can fine-tune the overall sound of the amp by tweaking the input capacitor and grid stop resistor. I changed the value from 100k to 33k and from 0 0.005 microfarad to 0 0.05 microfarad. Don't be afraid to try out different values and find the tone that you like. Alright, all you guitar nerds out there, here are finally some pictures of the Velcro National M clone. I hope you like this video. If you have any questions or opinions, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.